Well, it's uh, it's been a minute since I've done a one of these journal entries, and uh, might as well uh, do one here. A friend of mine who knows all about you know my Mandela effect stuff, but he's not really a Mandela effect guy. But he uh, he he and his wife were at this event and saw that sign and. Uh, he had to send it to me because I did that video many years ago about Morton Salt. And, uh, you know, it's never been Morton's, but here's a yeah, here's a sign that he saw, which uh, he had to share, which, which I appreciate that he's on the lookout. The other thing I wanted to share <clears throat> is just this kind of weird stuff. My um, daughter has been watching, kind of pet sitting our dog for a few for a while um, because I, my current work situation, my current life just has it to where I can't, I'm away from the house for a full 12 hours and uh, 13, 14 hours even. And there's just no way for the, the dog to, you know, it's just not good to keep, he can't keep him in the house like that. So she's been watching him. <clears throat> so when I was by her house the night before, she also gets the kids, and I pick up the kids from her because she watches them until I can get free. Uh, basically, I'm <clears throat> I'm working more hours than I've ever just ever had to put in. But the thing I wanted to share that happened yesterday uh, evening when I was picking up the kids, I went over and saw the dog on the sofa, and he was playing with that little toy on the floor, and he was sitting on that sofa, and I was petting him, and it's not that he's do, does this all the time. In fact, I, you know, it's been a long, it's, when he was a young dog, he might have tore up a stuffed animal. But I was thinking as I was petting him on that sofa and that soft, delicate fabric, I was thinking, man, this is something he could really tear apart. But, uh, but he's not, I mean, he's an old dog now. He's not a young dog and there's no reason to think that he would do this. He hasn't torn up anything in a long time. So I didn't say anything. I just, I just kept it to myself. And before the night was over, that's what happened. But what I found interesting is that that premonition was, was there, which is kind of odd. It just, it, it just hit me that this was about to ha happen and, and sure enough it did. And it, it was it is out of character. The dog has not done anything like that since it was young, young puppy. But here, old dog has just torn up that thing. And, of course, my daughter was none too happy. Um, <clears throat> I guess I should continue from where I left off. The last one I was talking about, you know, the Mandela effect shows me that what I'm, what I'm thankful about the Mandela effect is that I know that reality is just not that real. I, I mean, I can look at this reality and I completely know that this is kind of fakeish. There's something much bigger um, than this. There's something more real than what this is. And because of that, <clears throat> I've inquired a lot, read a lot of books and things and, and re have really questioned the, uh, you know, the idea of whether or not this is a school or a trap. David Icke wrote the book, The Trap, and it's like this reality is a trap. And I was saying, I think in the last one, what I didn't like about it, why I lean towards the school, is uh, it's hard for me to accept that the experience that I had with God back in 2016, that interaction, like it was like a near-death experience. That experience was so real to tell me that that God was a lie, a deception, it's just something I, I couldn't accept. I, I, it's just once you've experienced something, nobody can tell you that's it's different. You, you just know it's just too much. So there's a few other things though <clears throat> that I could talk about too. In the, um, the ideology of the trap or the Gnostic, it, it see, it feels like God is not as personal. Like God is, is just not the personal relationship God. It, it just feels more like a force to expl be exploited. And from David's book, I get the idea that it's, you know, the solution, the way out. The, 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 that's where I have a problem with, the solution. The solution to the problem is to just realize that you're God 
and defiantly say, nope, you're not going to trick me and I'm not going back. That's, that's kind of like the solution. First of all, I know that, <clears throat> I know that I'm not, you know, the, this idea that I'm God, it comes through that, that I'm, you know, all so powerful and I though, I know that I'm not. I know that I didn't create myself. I was created. I know that I'm not omnipotent. <clears throat> I know that I'm dependent on others and and God. I'm 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 dependent. I'm a depend. I'm a need. I'm a, I'm in need. I'm in a state of need. I'm not. I'm not God. Trust me. My my current job reminds me of that daily. That I am not God. It's very very humbling experience where I'm going through right now. <clears throat> so. The explanation that I just need to understand my own divine self and and just stand up to the deception of the light that's pretending to be so benevolent and loving that that I'm supposed to stand up against that and that that's a, the solution to the way out and also the 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 idea that that this deception force you know with the trap and the gnostics that this force of deception is even capable of radiating that level of love that's just beyond my ability to, to comprehend that. Another thing, like a big idea along the lines of Luciferianism is that we are God, that we are divine. And I just resist anything that goes down the path of the Luciferian agenda. Now, both ideas do address the idea, whether it's a trap or a school, both ideas address this idea of this loose harv- harvesting um reality this this idea of why suffering occurs and dark entities that feed on us they both kind of acknowledge that sort of thing or can you can fit them in into these ideas where there's these these opposing forces these opposites of all that is good these things that war against our soul a spiritual val- uh, battle whether you look at this place as a school or a trap <clears throat> there's room for these things these entities in both of them and the thing that I have to personally attest to, the thing that I've experienced so many times in my life, is that these dark entities, these demonic spirits, these things that are warring against our souls, they exist. I've experienced them. I've interacted with them. And I've heard so many others who have had similar experiences. I've been listening to a lot of near-death experience testimonies, and in, in several of those people have expressed experiences with both the dark shadowy entities and another one talked about these childlike, like immature, very immature, cackling, laughing, high pitched, um, type entity. I've experienced those two. So I've, I've got experience with, uh, with both types. Um, the interesting thing with the NDEs is the people when they first die, they're, they're so often just fully aware like they're the same personality that they were a minute ago. They just, they don't even realize they've died at first. They're just like trying to figure it out. This is so documented where they can see things that they shouldn't know because they're clinically dead and they come back reporting all this stuff. So that it's just a really amazing how in the presence they're in reality, but they're not quite there. They're just a shadow. They're, they're just a, you know, they're a ghost basically. They're a spirit looking at everything going on around them. And then they go, they leave into the tunnel or whatever, and they go. Most of the time, the reports have been positive to to heaven and the light. But very often, many people, even the ones that have positive experiences that go to the light, will report passing through and seeing these negative entities, these demonic things. And for a while, I was hearing people saying there's never accounts of demonic uh, or hellish experiences, but... Eventually, I came across a bunch of them. I've got, there's tons of them out there of people having hellish experiences and horrible experiences and terrifying, and they come back with PTSD. I mean, it's just the complete opposite of the positive experience, complete opposite. And that causes me to scratch my head and ponder a little bit. But the, the idea that these demonic beings exist and they're all around i i can't be in the same way i can't be told that 
the God experience that I had, that that wasn't a true loving God and a real experience. I can't be told that these demons don't exist either because I've had just as strong of experience as seeing them with all my senses, telepathically understanding, understand the communication. And I've listened to so many testimonies of other people having the exact same thing. So there's just like the Mandela effect, you know, a few stories of people seeing reality change. It's just anecdotes. It's not true science, but when you get thousands what you have is scientific data now. And same thing with these testimonies of people who have seen demonic beings and the evil that's that's all around us. It's to me, that's just scientific data at this point. It's, it's a fact. There's no convince me otherwise. And I've had to come to terms with the idea that I, de- I don't like the concept of hell at all. It, it, breaks, me, it breaks me mentally, it's my, psychologically it's too much for me to bear that the idea, the the whole idea of it, it just, it's too much, but demons, the existence of demons and hell are kind of joined at the hip. They go together too well. It's like peanut butter and jelly. They it's, it's hard to separate or to hold to a belief that these demon demonic spirits exist and to not believe the other. So I have to come to grips with that. I have to come to terms with I know because of the Mandela effect, I know this reality is so fake. Just like Morton Salt having never been Morton's in this reality, but there's so much bleed through evidence. I know this reality is fake. I've experienced the fakeness, the changes, the fakeness of this all all the time. But I know that when we leave this physical body, there's something else. And based on the testimonies of so many people, there seems to be a, a very positive good, righteous, holy place where you meet God, your creator, angels, and all that good stuff. And then there's this complete opposite world. And it, it makes sense that not too many people are going to report that. I mean, it, it it's horrifying to live through, so you don't want to repeat it to think about it. And it's embarrassing to, to admit to. There's all kinds of reasons. And then at, at a spiritual level, there might even be a dampering of people recalling it or being able to speak about it just on us on a in the same way that people glaze over and can't see the Mandela effect you're telling them they're agreeing with you and all these things that change and then all of a sudden the, the change happens or the download and all of a sudden they just they switch on you it, it could be a spiritual binding of people expressing their experiences with with a hellish experience but I've come to uh, grips with the idea that it's 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 very sobering to think about that these that there's this much evil all around and I don't know I lean towards the whole school thing but I'm also treading in the direction of you know it's a very important that we live right that we choose to live right that we choose to get right with God that we acknowledge Jesus and ask for help because if we go to we go through our life claiming that we're God, we might miss out on the opportunity and the the beauty of surrendering ourselves over to Jesus, and there is salvation in that. It it is a freeing. I, I, I know that when I had my God experience in 2016, there was a great freedom in the surrender. The the turning of my will over and saying, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, on earth. There's a there's a there's a great surrendering and yielding in that act. So and there's power, you know, if you listen to these testimonies, these NDEs and people that have had experiences with demons and people that have been bound by sin and chained up and their whole life is just like their whole life is is being a, a servant to sin and they can't seem to help themselves. But once these demonic entities start claiming their victims and they start coming and popping up and showing themselves, there's some incredible authority and power in the name of Jesus. When they call on the name of Jesus, these things flee. No matter how powerful they might be, the the name of Jesus holds weight in the spiritual world. And there's no other name that compares. So that's been my personal experience. That's also been the fruit of all of my research about it. I'm still puzzled. I'm still questioning. I'm still listening and listening to the accounts and trying to figure it out. But uh, I know that from everything I've seen that the way we choose to live is extremely important. And uh, 
and we need to take heed. You know, if you're Mandela affected, you know this reality is fake. You know, right now, looking around, this thing, <laughs> this isn't what, this isn't the true form of existence. There's something more going on. Absolutely, without a doubt. No question in my mind. Now, that next step, that next phase of where we're really meant to be eternally, that's a very important question. And uh, I'm thankful that the Mandela effect kind of slapped me across the face and made me realize this this world is is not this is temporary this is a construct if it's a school if it's a trap whatever it is it's a construct it's temporary it's not it's not the eternal reality i guess that's my uh journal entry for tonight i hope you all have a good one and god bless <laughs>